This is a podcast presented by Hard to Find Media. Subscribe to Hard to Find Media on youtube.com slash Hard to Find Media Network. This shit is free. Share it. Blast it. Welcome to the Hardy Boys podcast about the television program Taboo, um, starring and co-created by Tom Hardy, airing on the BBC and the FX here in the in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have why, well, first off, my name is Jason. I'm Mac. I'm here all the time. <laughs> yeah, this is not our first rodeo. No, this is our seventh rodeo. Yeah. So one EO seven, thank you. Yeah, uh, the penultimate episode of of this season. Yeah, it's like I just uh, got a stay of execution or something. <laughs> I'm like really excited. I initially had it in my head it was ten episodes, like going in today, but I'm like pretty excited that it's eight. Yeah, like more just because like I, I want shit to get real, and it's getting real. It is. We were so bombed out after last week, and the last week, two weeks have been a little rough. We feel kind of good tonight. Yeah, and I had a real good time watching this episode. Um, before we get into what happens and why we liked it so much, um, last week's business. Still don't know what's going on with pig heads. Okay, we got to dig deeper. Pig masks. Yeah. yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, I don't even know what the proper Google search terms are. Uh, yeah, you. Could, I can imagine that could go into some like wrong turns, which might be deeply upsetting. <laughs> I haven't, didn't find any of those in okay. my cursory research. On the exercise bike today, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be that guy researching pig ads on the exercise bike. <laughs> but there are like a lot of very just generic like listicles of like the scariest masks from history. Okay, and nothing to explain like why it's a trope that keeps showing up at like creepy rich people parties and things. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Can't help you there. But I did solve the lethal weapon. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Jo- what? <laughs> Joe Pesci. Jobs, Joe, Joe, Joe Pesci. Jobs. Um, <laughs> Joe Pesci is Jobs. <laughs> now that would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe Pesci. Pesci's Leo Getz is a banker turned um, uh, rat, I guess, in Lethal Weapon Two. <laughs> if you can put that as a job, <laughs> sure. Technically, you can write in your job. So, like, <laughs> that would have been admissible on his taxes, I imagine. Yeah, I wonder how the IRS feels about that. <laughs> I mean, be keeping it real. Okay, so banker uh, rat and Lethal Weapon three. He, you are correct. He is a real estate agent. Okay. By the time we get to Lethal Weapon four, he's turned into a private investor. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. It's just like because he wants to be like his best friends. Yeah. They had, yeah. Right. They're like, I want in on this too. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Um. And then regarding gun technology. Oh yeah, the, I was wondering about this. I mean, in this episode, we do see somebody fire two shots, but they had to reload. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. Um, The cursory research I did was still calling the weapons of the time muskets. Mm -hmm. But I believe that at this point they'd moved on to the bullets that were just little uh, spheres instead of like the, you know, pellets, like a bunch of pellets that you put in, you stuff down, and then you I think that you always put a musket, but I think it's gunpowder is like the shit that's in a bag in a movie. And then you like jam it all in there. Gunpowder is like a bunch of like it's like you'd have like a like nerd size. <laughs> I really think it is. I think it's like you shove the ball in. That's hardly uh, powder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's not quibble over semantics. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you even bothered to Google this, but I'm pretty sure it was like ball powder, such as it may be, some ramen, uh-huh. and then some aiming, hopefully, and then some <laughs> hopefully blasting a motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, the aiming is the difference between you and me. And a man like John Wick. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. Um, so that's that. Uh, we sh- probably should also give a shout out to the guy who left a YouTube comment. Hey, thanks, guy. I'm sorry I'm blanking on your username. I'll pull it up because you deserve a special shout out. Yeah. In case you're listening this week. It was a shockingly thoughtful comment on the internet, which is always my boggling. Well, yeah, especially I, uh, a positive one. This there's one, a lot yeah. of thoughtful negative ones. Um, 
But I did like that the like headline caption was um, perfection with an exclamation point. So thank you. No news to me. Um, we were especially tickled by your comment. The delight in Tom Hardy clearly comes through. <laughs> and I, for one, welcome the possibility of future episodes exploring Tom Hardy's work beyond Taboo. So we'll see how we feel in a week. But that yeah. could be a thing. It's true. He has no shortage of fascinating credits. Yes, and we love the TH. And the people demand that we go back and revisit Minotaur. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, we may just like dig up the archived version of our previous podcast if we can find the files. Not a bad not a bad call for um, the Hour Hour, but that's a whole... If it comes to pass, we'll explain what the hell we mean by that. Yes. Um, Taboo, episode seven. Let's Get right into it. Mm-hmm. We pick up right where we left off last week. Based, well, more or less, like I assuming it's a couple a day later or later that day, but it's yeah. the funeral for Winter. Right. She's giving. She's being buried at sea. Mm-hmm. Per what appear to be Helga's wishes. And there's like a priest or preacher there who seems to be reading prepared marks that Helga has clearly written and is doing a less than elegant job. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably... like, you want me to finish this or what? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah come on. Let's do this thing. Um, Hardy, or Delaney rather, is watching uh, somewhat from a distance. Um, Atticus is present yeah. at um, this funeral. He's casting a bit of a pall over the already somber morning here. Yes. Um, we learn um, in no uncertain terms that um, Winter is Helga's daughter. Yeah. So uh, that theory is finally confirmed. Yeah. Delaney was right about that. Indeed. Um, speaking of children, uh, Chandley brings Robert to Delaney's house. Yeah. And um, Brace opens a door and Lauren is there and she's like, what's this all about? Well, first, like, uh, Chandley, like, sees Lauren and is like, Miss Bo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> He's like... Oh yeah, yeah! Finally, my shot. <laughs> Delaney's not home. Yeah, like I'm, I'm bringing this orphan to you. Naturally, like, this is my opening, and I better try and exploit it. It is kind of a ingenious cock block. Oh yeah, he's like, hey, do you, do you know, he had a son too. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I'm like on the market. Hey, I'm just the good guy here. Yeah, I know. I'm just delivering magic. this unfortunate child. Yeah. Um, but Lorna, who's like, would uh, you call him an orphan again? So, like, semantics wise, since his. I mean, it didn't seem like he had a real fatherly relationship with that dude, but that dude Davidson. raised him. Yeah, but, yeah, from the time he was like a child. I don't know. I don't want me to get caught up in that, but it's like a weird thing to think about how much shit this kid has gone through. Like his, you know, he presumably never knew his parents, right? But the dude who was raising him had his tongue ripped out. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, I'm curious what's going on with that kid <laughs> internally. Well, and we still don't know who the mom is. We have our suspicions. We do have our suspicions. But that is, like, one of the few questions remaining unresolved. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the kid gets in the door, and uh, poor Chombley gets that door thrown right in his face, and <laughs> yeah. he's trying to, like, step in for, uh, for, a, for a mo. does not go his way. No. Um, and there is, like, a bitter and somewhat funny exchange where Lorna's like, what's going on? And Brace is just, like, a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Like, there's just no pretense about this anymore. This poor kid is just like, oh, this is my lot in life. <laughs> yep. This is how I do. Um, we cut back to Winter's funeral. Her and um, Atticus uh, are in, like, a small canoe with her body, and yeah. they paddle out um, through the muck towards um, the river. Um, and Helga says at the river... The river will only take her body. I will keep her soul. Um, so it's very important to her that her body, uh, that they paddle out far enough that her body's going to end it. The current's going to take it to is, the ocean where she felt most attached. I assume it was like, a, she was wanting to go to America, right? So I think it was like a thing where the currents would naturally drag her body in that direction. It's a long I, journey. I mean, I took it as more of a poetic thing. But yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's also right. like I think a broad like fuck this country, which was always like shitty to her, and like the opportunity that the concept of America like provided to her. Totally. 
Um, and all of our urchin friends have been watching this whole thing, and all of them split except for this one dude yeah. who's like twirling around. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lorna's there, and she's like, "Hey, I want to talk to you." Because Lorna, I think, has her suspicions that Blaney did not murder Winter. And there's, like, a, a bit of a convo between them where it's like, I don't think you did this. Isn't that what they're talking about when they're, like, on the log watching them, like, set out in the canoe, basically? Right, yes. There's, like, a bit of a thing. And then we also get a scene with Atticus where he's bringing out the canoe and she's, like, Helga's essentially saying that, obviously, Blaney's a fucking murderer. Yeah. And he's gonna pay. Yeah. And Atticus, uh, I thought this was an interesting scene for him because it shades him to a great degree. Because yeah. obviously he's the dude who like has both dropped and gotten rid of no shortage of bodies in his time. But, he admits to as much. Yeah. He's like, oh, like, I know how to get it to the right current. On a, yeah, for sure. On, I don't know. Like The way they film him kind of shows how like seriously bummed out he is. Like it, it, he seems hardened, but also very sympathetic. Yeah, which is a lot more than you think for a guy who's just so used to throwing bodies into rivers and thinking nothing of right. it. And he's witnessed a lot of violence over the last yes. seven episodes. <laughs> to say nothing of, presumably, his life before this. <laughs> right, and having been asked to like strategically place a lot of bodies uh-huh. on his friend's behalf. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> like, this is your problem now, go put it down by the docks. <laughs> With a note. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, the, the urchin gets away from Lorna, but we'll, we'll pick up with them later. Yeah. Um, Delaney's at home, bummed, getting, you know, wasted, uh, as per usual. Yeah. Sees a sort of a vision of winter. Um. After his last blackout went really well, he was like, I'm going to double down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and he says something to her, which is quite interesting. He says, well, to this vision of her that isn't really there. You're among them now, aren't you? The ones who used to sing to me. So that's... Curious. I mean, I think it comes back to, like... I, they haven't really picked this up since episode one, but the like, the visions of the, of the slaves um, that presumably were aboard. The influence who died... We been fl- we've gotten a lot again. of flashes. Little sense. tiny bits, but mostly a lot of, like... Um, Mom stuff, as it occurs to too much mom stuff. And flashbacks, yeah, I would argue, still too much. Even with this, I'm that's the thing that would be one of my biggest complaints about the show, <laughs> right? And there's a lot more of it this episode too. Um, yeah. Later that night, somebody's knocking on the door, and uh, Delaney's like brace, but we got to brace who just looks terrified yeah. in a near fetal position with like bugged out eyes. Yeah. Like he ain't getting out of He's bed. He's in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. So the lady comes down to answer it in his favorite shirt. He has pants this time. Are there pants? Yeah, for shirtsies. Okay, well, at least he bothered to put on pants. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, weirdly impressed. Like, whoa, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. He does have pants on. Yeah. Um, it would have made this scene much more awkward if he was just <laughs> la- lounging with this man he does not know. Man spreading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's a power move of a kind. <laughs> it would be a Delaney move. The old open robe. Yeah. Um, his visitor is George Chichester. Hand him mm-hmm. a little night call. Um, <laughs> Delaney, I guess, is still a little drunk because he says something like, to the effect of, uh, I need to be clear that you're not a spirit like the others. <laughs> yes. Which is also total racial profiling. Because <laughs> he's like, hey, the only black guys I know are dead Slaves, slaves. <laughs> that haunt me. <laughs> so you're a real guy, right? But, but I mean, it, it mostly just speaks to how profoundly fucked up Delaney is, where he's just like, anytime he sees a black person, he's like concerned that it might be a ghost who's haunting him. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot to unpack emotionally. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it is not. Um, I, Hardy is um, pretty delightful in this scene, though. Just his wariness, his drunkenness and his uh it all dovetails together in such a way that you can't really tell how he's really feeling which makes it kind of pure delaney you know you never know exactly where he's coming from yeah he's got those sort of like drunk uncle crazy eyes um and that weird delaney combination of like does he have a does he know what he's doing does he not know what he's doing is he even in his right mind yep yeah definitely um, but Chichester's there to say, like, hey, man, I think you were aboard that ship. 
Yeah, he thinks he has the full scoop. Um, and he wants Delaney to write a written confession mm-hmm. or account of what happened aboard that ship, the Cornwall Sea influence, whatever, so that he can use it in court in his case against Strange. Yeah. But Hardy never admits to actually having been on the vessel. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Chichester's version of events is that he was a slave that was brought to that remote trading outpost. Right. Then himself got wrapped up in the slaving business, was aboard that vessel, which sank. He's the only survivor. And as it was sinking, his job was... To, like, nail down, like, the the hold where all the slaves were, right? Yeah. Um, so that they would drown. Yeah. Um, I guess he does admit to it, because he says, like, oh, uh, you know, I said, aye, aye, captain. Yeah, that's, that's the only confirmation we have. My confusion about this is that I, if memory serves, we have gotten an alternate version of this, and what we see in the flashbacks is not 100% clear enough for me to feel that I 100% believe any of the narratives as being soundly true, because they were all secondhand. And the only person who was there who could legitimately confirm or deny it is Delaney. Right. So, like, and that's why I still feel awfully hazy on the details, you know? Right. Like, he was obviously a bad guy, and I assume was, like, a slaver, but I still don't feel that I fully comprehend the narrative of his leaving England onwards still feels quite up in the air to me. Totally. By design. Yes. Um, But Chichester does say that he made his way back to England with Diamonds he stole from another trader, so that at least explains a little what's of what's going on at the top of the first episode. Right. Yeah. Um, if indeed that version of events is correct. Yes. Um. So after this, he um, uh, he's uh, upstairs in his room. He's got two sealed envelopes: one for Brace and one for. Lorna, right? Is that who the other one was? Uh, that sounds right. Is there not one for no, Mr. no? It's, it's, Ch- it's Chom- Chomble. Chomble, yeah, yeah. One for Chomble and one for Brace. Okay. Um, Robert comes up to bring him some breakfast on a tray to his like incredibly ungrateful, horrible, uh, frightening father. By breakfast, you mean brandy? <laughs> yeah, but there's got to be there's food like, too, like right? a crust of toast on there too. I do like that. That like he had the foresight to be like. <laughs> Oh, Papa needs his brandy. You didn't finish this bottle last night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, he plays this weird sort of game with the kid where, like, he holds out this key like it's for him, and then he keeps snatching it away, yeah. holding it back out, snatching it away. This is, like, the most fun thing that's happened in all of Taboo. This is, like, the yeah. closest to... This uh, is the most fun thing that has probably ever happened to this kid. I honestly think <laughs> that you are right about that. He, he kind of almost smiles. Almost. It's so, like, it's kitty corner to being a smile, which is like a ray of sunshine. Yeah. In this show. And he gives him uh, the key to the safe. Yeah, he just says, for the safe. We don't know what safe. No, but I assume it's like a thing where, like, I'm, you know, going, uh, a thing might happen to me, so, like, I want to, like, this kid is trustworthy. Yeah. Hey, kid, you're in this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, now, now that you live under my roof, you're part of my <laughs> hey, you're an of accessory the now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, he did give him that speech. Was that like last week? He or already weeks ago? is an accessory. He was yeah. stirring the fucking gunpowder, that poor little bastard. Well, that's how he earned it, you know? I mean, honestly, yeah. Uh, to a certain degree, there's a, a sort of meritocracy going on. Mm-hmm. He does want people who are very good at what they do. Uh, next scene. He goes down to this real short. But it's kind of funny. He goes, you see him walking down by the shitty part of town, and his hat just immediately flies off. Yeah, and there's like a, the sound of a, a bullet. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's Helga who's like murderer. Yeah, and as she reloads, sees I think she misses, and he just walks away. Yeah, exactly. Picks up his hat and walks away. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I think the next scene is Zilpha coming to visit him. No, no, it's just Zilpha in the tub. Well, sure. It's a, it's a micro Zilpha montage. <laughs> it's not a montage. It's just oh, okay. Well, yeah, because we see a little little bit of her walking through the town. Her face is slightly more healed. Yeah, and um, 
she what is she looking at? I can't remember. Anyway, it's not important. She she goes to visit Delaney and basically is like, hey, uh, you're right. That was weird. We shouldn't have gone to Bone Town so quickly after my husband was murdered by me because <laughs> I think you told me to. A little weird. But not too weird. That right? sounds like, like the worst like <laughs> memoir about like confessing a murder. <laughs> That's the full title? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... But she's like, you know, but we're still into each other, right? Like, when you came back to town, you were like, I love you. Yeah. So, let's do this thing. They, these What's two standing in our way? are truly both mesmerizingly great at sending mixed signals <laughs> constantly. <laughs> it must be they, something. They kind of the deserve each other. Yeah. In that regard. But he's like, uh, fuck that. No. Zilpha's still acting weird as hell. Yes. I gotta say. And uh, again, by design, it's like she's just acting very peculiar in a way that I don't know how to pin down. Though we, I think, already laid out our pet theory about this last week. It's either that our theory is true, that she's somehow possessed by the spirit Spirit of Delaney's dead mother. Or she finally has gotten what she secretly wanted all along. And now Delaney's like, yeah, well, I don't want that anymore. (laughs) He basically says, like, fuck off. Puts a diamond on the table and says, uh, for your widowhood. Yeah. Which is like thoughtful. Yeah. Real thoughtful. Right. Real the lady. Hit Jesus. And quit it, huh? <laughs> Good God. Yeah. How much blood needs to be shed for you to just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any upper limit to that one. No. <laughs> um, but next we learn where the gunpowder has been stored. Where's it being stored, Max? Uh, the. Insane asylum where Delaney's mama once was, which is now abandoned. Bedlam, yeah. Um, and uh, our main man Atticus, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They are hanging out there. Um, and uh, Delaney says something to him where he's like, he's like, here's something for your book. Tying it back to what was that episode? Two? That's when we first met out, I guess. Yeah, and he's I got all the this... fact that he's an aspiring novelist. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd forgotten. It's one of my favorite <laughs> character quirks in a while. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's cute. Um, and he had all those questions about Africa. So Hardy's like, hey, here's one for you. Uh, the lioness is always the most dangerous when she's protecting her cub. Right. Or some, something to that effect. Yeah. Um, and Addict is like, well, yeah, I know. We got to go kill Helga. Yeah. And Hardy's like, that woman has suffered enough. We're not going to harm her. Um, and Addict's just like, dude, she's going to go to the company. He's like, yep. Oh, I know. Oh, sure will. <laughs> yeah, totally. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Delaney, overconfident Tom Hardy character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, part of me wonders if that's just, like, an amazing character affectation. It's not that he's the smartest one in the room, but it's just, maybe he just constantly assumes that the worst possible thing will usually happen, and is constantly working on contingencies. That could a be. Batmanian approach to things. Yeah, yeah. It's his his Bane's voice living in Batman's brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Um. Yeah. So it, that pretty much covers that scene, right? It totally the, does. The gist of it. I think the next big one is like a confrontation between it's, Brace and Delaney. Yeah, and Delaney. So Brace is basically sitting in the exact same position in his room. Hasn't moved in like days. He I looks guess. so petrified. It's very sad. And Delaney's like pounding on the door. He's like, Brace, I know you're not sick and you're not dead yet. <laughs> yeah. Come on out. And then once Brace somehow manages to pull himself out of the room, Delaney's sitting with his legs up in an easy chair. Yeah, slumped down, but still somehow exuding power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's in a total prone position and yet just is terrifying. Very super villain. Yes. Uh, and then Brace is basically having, like, a very tender emotional breakdown. Yes. Where this is the scene where he admits to... Well, let's not I, drop I, that bomb. I, just, that's, why, just, that, that's why I was being very deliberate. Like he's Indiana like, Jones stepping on symbols. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, in, in, in the Aramaic. Uh, is that what... I haven't watched Jehovah's last... It's Last Elder Crusade with that yeah. one, right? Yeah. Okay. Um... Dude, we Is that did the it. second? <laughs> no, that's the third. Oh, tight. Three episodes in a row. That's impressive. Did not mean to do that, but... I love that it was you this time. 
Man, we have got step up. We got a real problem. Um, but Delaney's like, why are the rats not dead? I know from the receipts that you bought a fuck ton of arsenic, and yes. we still have a rat problem. Which also, like, I thought this scene might go a different direction. I thought it was like a thing where, like, I know you're a fucking rat. Oh, kind of thing. Uh, that was our theory as all along too, but it turned out that was one. That was one like straight up my theory, but I was like, I could see where that would be a thing because it'd also be a yeah. smart way to subvert the like Alfred, right? Thing, you know? Uh, yeah, we were both what you what the kids would call sus. <laughs> Carry on. Um, but it turns out that Delaney's. I mean, basically, Brace just confesses to killing Delaney Senior. He says. He's, yeah, um, he did him a kindness. Yeah, in no uncertain terms. Yeah, he he lets that be known. So um, it wasn't the beer man. <laughs> that beer man no. slandered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a sweet validation for that beer man from like episode one or two. Yeah, don't talk shit on beer man. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to bring suds to London. Um. Yeah, he says he was doing him a kindness. Hardy's not having it. He's like, "Fuck you." When is he ever though? To be fair. Yeah. Um, but Brace is like, dude, he was like burning his own flesh. Like, I, I, yeah, he was like full blown cuckoo bananas. Yeah, he says he like wasn't like a like a, a Christian child anymore or something. Wasn't a Christian soul. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but and he like had kept all the buttons from his overcoat or something. Yeah. Uh, like some why? sort of so, like, memento or I give don't to know. James or something. But clearly, this guilt has been eating away at him, and for whatever reason, bubbled yeah. over. Um, this week. Right. So, yeah. Um, that was that awful thing. It was sad. Uh, but it does, the button on that scene is delightful. Because Hardy's not like, I'm gonna fucking kill you now. He's like, you're needed downstairs. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Delaney is destroying the kitchen. <laughs> She's about to ruin a duck. That's, <laughs> that is right, yeah. That is such a great beat. Um... And meanwhile, at um, the Dutch East India Company, they've got some visitors. Helga, and uh, I don't... Uh, do you remember this character's name? She's been featured... I wish I did. She's the most prominently featured prostitute. Like, she took part in the um, robbery for the, the, the saltpeter, yes. etc. She's shown up the most. So they are basically just saying, like, Delaney, he guilty. Right. Be bad. Yes. Um, they don't... Do they, they know where the gunpowder... They don't know where the gunpowder is. They don't know where the gunpowder is. But That's, they know, they're like, hey, we will go on record as him having collaborated with the Americans. Basically, they're like fucking Delaney because their testimony can pin him for treason against the Crown. Exactly. And also fuck the Americans in the doing and keep that hypothetical powder out of their hands. Like, it, it's a big shit show. Their yes. testimony is a big, big deal. And I think that they think things are going to go their way. Unfortunately, it's more of a, well, you're kind of like our prisoner until we can, like, get your testimony. So, sorry, not sorry. Right. Um, if, like, big shock there that they're going to dick them over. Yeah. Um, but we find out there's a specific reason why they've done this um, coming up here. Um, but once again, in his very first scene in the episode, Sir Stuart Strange drops an F-bomb. Yeah, as he's wont to do. <laughs> he's like, we have him. We fucking have him! <laughs> so great. Um, so they're all stoked, those those jackasses. They suck. I think the next thing is um, that Delaney's out in the woods doing some magic stuff. He's got some feathers. Ah, man, I really hope that this isn't, you know, hasn't been executed in an insensitive way. But I do sort of doubt that they put that much care or thought into researching the ritual aspect of the show. Uh, I'm I'm inclined to agree with you. Uh, I I still just don't know what to make of it in general. And like we're as you said in the penultimate fucking episode. And like, what is the reveal going to be that's going to be so like make me so gobsmacked that I'm like, oh, it was worth it to hold off this long. Like I hope to be proven wrong, but I I'm not feeling great about that aspect. Personally, I mean, I'm just inferring at this point that it is um, Native American stuff. Um, but that's how I read it. I'm just saying I don't see how it's going to be narratively satisfying, 
regardless of levels of sensitivity as well, like it just yeah. feels like a lot of nothing that's also racially insensitive, which is like two strikes against it of different flavors of inflammation. Yeah. Yes. Culturally speaking. Sure. Um you gotta bismol that shit, man. They wrinkle they wrinkle me for two very different reasons. Uh yeah, but it, it, we do get some more, you know, brief flashes of shit, you know. His There's mother. a cool shot of Hardy covered in mud, where he all in like white mud or something, where he has like opaque eyes. Yeah, just r- fucking weird, weird color saturation stuff. Yeah, very trippy. There's some old man. I believe that's his father. That's what he I assumed l- too. Going cray cray. Yeah, before. So that was my assumption. It was interesting. He's like a skinny guy. I'm pretty sure it's the same dude. Yeah. I haven't seen his corpse since, like, episode one, so forgive me. You are forgiven. Um, uh, but he's interrupted in w- whatever he's doing by Godfrey, mm-hmm. who, uh, yet again, has been made to, like, sprint across town to deliver Godfrey some Godfrey must have the most, like, unfathomable, like, ulcer. His whole life is just, like, these chronic, like... Oh, everything's going to shit. Yeah, but his legs are probably toned. Oh, yeah. Godfrey never skips leg day. <laughs> Clearly. Because he's skipping along the cobblestones of London. Uh, but he's basically just there to tell Delaney, per usual, something he already knows. He's like, yeah, yeah, those ladies ratted me out. Right. And um, I believe Godfrey tells him where they're being kept. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, at, um, I don't know, we'll just call it Crown Town. Love it. Okay. <laughs> Glad we're rolling Inst- with that. Instantly sold. Um, Cyburn's lawyer, aka Coop, is meeting with Strange S- at all. Stuart Strange, uh, British Alex Winters, and uh, African Brit- Bureau. British Cheers. British Norm from Cheers. That's British Norm from Cheers? That one. I thought you were calling the guy who got, like, fucked up at the end of the Oh, last that's week. right. He, he totally was. Rest in peace, <laughs> British Norm from Cheers. I hardly knew you, but you seem like a real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You thumbless <laughs> dickwad. Um, anyway, now we find out what, what Strange is planned. <laughs> I wish you were ready for Taboo. <laughs> to, to lady murders him. <laughs> I don't know if dickwad was in the vernacular back then. Another thing to look up. The etymology of dickwad. Put a pin in that one for next week. Uh, you know I will. Um, anyway, we find out that um, Strange's whole thing is like, well, hey, look, we've got these prostitutes who can testify against Delaney. Yeah. And Thoid is there, and he's like, well, it turns out that if it's true that Delaney's committed treason, then for blah de blah reason, uh, Nootka Sound will belong to the Crown. Yeah. And Coop's like, uh, okay, you dumbass, you just handed us the Nootka Sound. Right. But Strange is like, hang on, man, only we know where these women are being kept, so you need us, and in exchange, we want, you know, a monopoly on trading pelts and tea. So they're essentially coming to an uneasy alliance that will at least allow for less in in squabbling. Yes. Right. And like, we're just doing this because we love the, the king. And Coop's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll strike a deal with the honorable East India Company. Yeah. It really, like... Insert jerk-off hand motion, yeah, essentially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Odd bubble saying dickwad. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they've they've reached a compact. That's mm-hmm. what's gonna happen. They just need to arrest Delaney. Yeah. Um, Delaney, for his part... Well, we, we, we got to Chichester, who's clearly at the... Um, what we learn is referred to as a Molly house. Yeah. That was a new one by me. I've never heard that term before. Yeah. But it's Godfrey's uh, other, his side gig. Yeah. Um, and Chichester's checking out some, like, bigger passion. I'm not entirely clear on that aspect of it. I thought there must be money involved, but maybe not. It's my assumption, but I... I, who's I mean, it's clearly also a passion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because we find out that he has women's garments at home as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chichester's there, checking out some, like, vintage porn. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Then Hardy enters. Some, like, Kama Sutra shit. Yeah, sort of like that. Or, like, I don't know if they were... Early comics. comics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Before Tijuana Bibles were a thing. Yeah, t- totally. You had artfully rendered porn. Yeah. 
<laughs> Those were the days. Um, so he wants Godfrey's uh, full I don't know, explanation of like the things that have gone down while the hands were raised, so all the like pertinent deeds that he's been holding back, right? He wants a, a written confession. Yeah, but that, that is tantamount to that that yes. will help his case. Because Delaney had been like, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to, you know, make a confession or a statement, but I have another plan. This turns out to be the other plan. Yeah. Is that he'll have Godfrey do it. Yes. And Godfrey's like, I can't do that. I'm going to be so fucked, man. I'm going to be so fucked. And then Delaney's like, hey, GC, can you leave the room for a sec so I can... Yeah. Let me wrap up my man here. Yeah, exactly. We need to have a little heart-to-heart. Yeah, a couple of bros here. We're just yeah, going to yeah. have a little sesh. Um, sesh being, I don't know, another cockamamie scheme of Delaney's. <laughs> yeah. Where basically he's like, listen, dude, just tell him you're going to... I'm going to get a fucking bone. I'm going to... Sh- I'm going to sail you away. No, no it's going to be fine. Sail away. Yeah, he's like, don't, just tell him you're going to confess. I'm g- I'm on a I got a boat. I mean I don't have the boat yet, but I'm getting a boat. Yeah. You're gonna get on the boat. You'll be on your way to America before this inquest even. It's starts. like some like bad boyfriend talking their partner <laughs> into something horrible, essentially. Like, no no, I'm gonna figure it all out, babe. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it, babe. Yeah. Babe. It kind of feels like that, because he clearly is like manipulating Godfrey, because of his, like, romantic or at least emotional attachment to him. Well, but he also says, like, hey, listen, man, on my boat, no judgment. No, yeah, exactly. You can live hey, your life. no rules. You stay up until 1230. No big deal. You wear women's clothes as much as you want. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a party on my boat, man. No curfew. All inclusive. Um, And this appears to work, because Godfrey tells Chichester that he's going to do that. Yeah, he comes out, like, swinging in terms of just being, like, I will deliver this statement, and seems very I will about it. shout it to the four winds. <laughs> yeah, and then we go. Sounded like a man with a gun to his neck. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to sell it, though, to be fair. Right. Um, and then we're back at Godfrey's place where Hardy's just, like, Ugh, sitting in the chair waiting. And he's, he's super cash, but he's like, hey, listen, man, pack your bags. you got to be out of here in, like, five minutes, turns out. <laughs> yeah, and... Poor Godfrey, he's trying to, like, pack up all his shit. I can't fit my whole life in a bag in five yeah. minutes. And he's like, well, tough shit. The, uh, the police are on their way. Um, and he gives him, like, an address written on a piece of paper. He's like, hey, you're going to find a dude with some markings on his face here. He's going to take you to a friend of mine named Atticus. <laughs> Go find Atticus. <laughs> Go find the guy with markings on his face so that you can find the man with markings on his head. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Said the man covered in markings on his body. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. If you got a tat, you're cool. Yeah, exactly. Only trust like the tatted bros <laughs> exactly. in the taboo verse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how you know that they're dank and they can hang. <laughs> so if they're covered in mildly upsetting amounts of tattooery. Oh yeah, there's no such thing as a good tattoo in the taboo verse. <laughs> Okay. Um, and then we cut to. Uh, oh, we're still. Yeah. Delaney hasn't left. He's still at no, he, the house. No, he's house. roaming to a different part of the house. Right. And all of these. He's um, getting sassed something fierce by one of the ladies uh, there. You want us to leave? Yeah, well, he's like, soldiers are coming. You should go. And then they're just. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. The dandiness of it is delightful. And he's just like, you should go now. Before the, you see the violence that will be visited upon you. Yeah, it's like before the extreme violence <laughs> yes. is visited upon us or something. And there's like a goo. And yeah. Yeah, they, they everyone's in the room. room. Yep. And then uh, the soldiers come. Well, yeah, but as they're like storming the building, he like very calmly sits down in a chair and like sorts a deck of cards. <laughs> And I, I thought it was either going to be like, he's about to fuck everyone up super hard. We were both hoping that it was going to be a thing where Delaney's just like, Rah! <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Marvel comic style one take hallway fight. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, he gets knocked out right away. Um, one of Dunbarton's uh, dudes, some guy we've never seen before. The spin of show we're all dying for. <laughs> Dunbarton's <laughs> dudes. <laughs> That is network of child spies on the streets of London. <laughs> yeah. Um, everyone else is, like, splitting. 
you know, burning their correspondence, the Carlsbad. Yeah, everyone's trying to, like, create space um, between... Chongli. Yeah. But they're all the, taking the proverbial powder out of London because they're smart enough to have connections to know that shit's going sideways for Delaney. And yes. that they will then be up shit's creek as well. Exactly, Um But Dunbarn's like, I'm good where I am. He says, um, when my reds are red, my whites are white, and my blues are blue, mm-hmm. then I will clear out. Because God damn it, he's passionate about his flags. Mm-hmm. His color, you might say his colors don't run. <laughs> Did I just blow your mind a little bit? You blew my mind as I blew my nose, my friend. <laughs> um, they take Delaney to the fucking Tower of London. Yeah. Hardcore. Makes sense, but I somehow was still like, whoa. I was like, I forgot about that. Har- harsh burn slash, slash, exactly, yeah. Makes sense. And um, then some soldiers uh, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> beat naked. the crap out of him yeah. and strip him naked. So as one does. Bronson style, baby. He's naked back. In a, naked in a prison cell. <laughs> um, Lorna, meanwhile, catches back up with that little moppet. Yeah. The gritty, uh, uh, what's the Peter Pan boys? What are those Peter Pan boys? The Lost Boys? The Lost Boys. Yeah, yeah the steampunk Lost Boy. Yes. We've seen earlier. Exactly. And Minus the looks steam. Like a, yeah. He looks like a fucking ghost in a Guillermo del Toro movie when we catch up with him looking at like a makeshift altar with Winter's name and mm-hmm. uh, I think like a Virgin Mary. Something like that. Yeah, he's bumming. Um, and Lauren is like, hey, um, I know you uh, know some shit about who done her. And that it wasn't Delaney. Because that was like, in general, we should not backtrack, but clarify. That we, I think there's a bit of a general, like, somberness hanging over this episode where it's like, oh, God, do we have to? So Delaney's like a child murderer. Right. But which it's seemed pretty a little, early on in this one, we both, that shit, we're both like, okay, clearly it can't be that. With the amount of people sort of doubting it and his own, like, yeah. reluctance to be like, well, I did, I didn't, I, I don't know, I could. Like, okay, you didn't. Yeah, and exactly. I think you maybe no. And then Lorna races home to talk to Brace, who's to like, scrubbing the shit out yeah. of the pot. Oh yeah, like obsessively. He's in a bad way. Brace, yeah, Brace is like reaching a bottom. Yeah, I, I feel like essentially. Yeah, he looks like a man about to explode from guilt and grief. Yeah, and he's been scrubbing this pot so hard that his fucking hands, hands are bleeding. bleeding. Yeah. But Lauren is like, I'm here to tell you that I found somebody who, who was a witness and says that the company killed Winter. It wasn't it wasn't Delaney. Is that great? He's not a child murderer. Yeah. <laughs> but Brace is just like, God. Yeah, one more, <laughs> one <laughs> more thing we don't have to put on his LinkedIn resume. <laughs> child murderer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> not among his skills so far as we know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just bad parent. Uh, yeah, I'm like spending other things, but... Or Brace, like, tips over this cauldron, which, like, smashes in half, and, again, just reiterates the fact, it's like, I'm, I murdered his dad. Yes, he's like, arsenic is a kindness, and he's like, I, I should have murdered Delaney. Yeah, because where he is now, no one will give him, like, the kindness of arsenic, essentially. That's exactly what he says. Yeah. And, man, the Tower of London does not look fun. <laughs> no, it looks like a real suck fest, that's for sure. They put this Bad like, company abounds. <laughs> yeah, they put like a creepy like um, executioner style hood over his head and strap him to a chair. It's creepy because it's more like a it's like a gray KKK hood that he's like strapped to this chair. It's just very disconcerting on a silhouette level. Well, yeah. Um, and then we keep getting flashes from Delaney's POV because he has narrow slits in the eyes. So yeah. he's listening to Coop. Coop. Uh who's trying to lay out the law, essentially, where there's, like, a doctor, a torture guy, mm-hmm. and then also some soldiers for when he needs to be held down. And the torture guy has a truly creepy... A horrendous menagerie of unpleasant metal objects. <laughs> sitting on a bloody tray. With a rat crawling over it. <laughs> yeah. As if it needed to be more unpleasant. His name is Mr. Arrow. And- <laughs> yes, thank you. I totally spaced on that. And he's dressed like Victorian Lord Humongous. Yeah, dude. I mean, at least he's wearing a shirt and pants, but yes, you're not wrong. <laughs> True. But the mask is so, freaky as fuck. I agree. There's and, just a level of decorum, all yeah. things considered. Yeah, it's it's like one of the creepiest things that's happened on this show. 
The show's mask game has been strong throughout, I gotta say. <laughs> Props to the mask game, also yeah. like the weird makeup game, the tattoo game, mm-hmm. and the piercings game. Piercings game? Yeah, man, didn't you see Helga was rocking that nose ring? Yeah, I know, I know she she's got the, very the 2017. Ring. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> very 2017. Helga's was like a piercing. cool mom in 2017. I was like, whoa, I didn't know they were doing that. Tight. Yeah, right. <laughs> And she's got the whole, like, smeary mascara eyeshadow thing. That's also super in. Yeah, okay. She's hip. Ah, oh, we should get Helga's number. <laughs> <laughs> but her teeth are really jacked up. Uh, they're pretty gnar. Yeah. Like, oh, the cool. gold tooth thing is kind of in in, in certain circles. I dig too. Helga. I think Helga's cool. No, I dig Helga, too. I mean, she's even though she, she turned... Rat. To be, f- I don't but think she it counts as being a rat. Her friend you think murdered her daughter. Yeah, I think it's it is not qualified as ratting. Where it's just, you fucking murdered my kid. Like that's not. I mean, maybe some people disagree, but I think fuck you at that level. Where it's like I can turn against you to have stronger people destroy you because you murdered my goddamn kid. No, you're right. She's totally justified. I think that's chill. Um, not that I'm like a stop snitching advocate by any means. I don't know why I'm arguing this. Let's move on. <laughs> Um, that was a pro snitching. No, that was a stop snitching argument. I mean, basically, yeah, yeah. No, Karen, don't, let's get, don't talk to the cops. Yeah. Um. <laughs> in any case, uh, what Coop is trying to ascertain is like all of the names and the whereabouts of his American connections. Yeah. And in exchange, he'll give him a really dope cell. Thank you, <laughs> Thomas Moore's cell, which is a like, sweet oh, view. Rip, view of the Thames, man. Don't you want a view of the Thames? As opposed to Mr. Arrow coming to jack you up. Yeah, with like a fucking... It I don't looks know. like they're like grating off like, it's like some, a, uh, some leg. It's like a cast iron cheese grater. And they're just like <laughs> yeah, dude. flesh off of his leg and yeah, hands. Do you, do you want some like fresh ground pepper with that? <laughs> yeah, tell me when. <laughs> yeah, tell me when to stop. Just kidding, I won't stop. Uh, and Coop is, is, like, is just he, I mean he does not bleh. like bury the lead he's like I don't have a taste for this so like if you could just tell me what I need to know so I can get the fuck out of this dank murder cell that would just be peaches right and he's like he's asking Mr. Arrow like how long do you think this is going to take and he's like yeah one two hours tops yeah Coop's like okay I'll check back in with you <laughs> yeah totally I got a dip <laughs> my stomach doesn't feel good <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, then I think is the next thing is Eve is oh god, it's him getting waterboarded. Yeah, oh, this is a long scene. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, um, yeah, he gets waterboarded like a bunch, and yeah. they keep at like the doctor keeps checking and be like, no, he still has a pulse. Cool, we're good. Yep, do keep, it. keep it going. That's zero That's dark more. thirty. This shit. Yeah. And uh, and Delaney's just not talking. Every time they like, you know, try and get him to say something, he just says like, "Stood straight." Yeah, ex- exactly. He is profoundly unmoved by the amount of torture that's going down here. Because what he wants is a council with Stuart Strange, and then he says he'll give them whatever they want. Private council. So he's with sticking. Strange. He's sticking to his initial like bargaining point, essentially, such yeah. as it is. Who could have guessed? <laughs> yeah. That he wouldn't give it to torture. Mm-hmm. Um, and while he's being waterboarded, he keeps having brief glimmers of him floating in the water. Like a credit was, montage of taboo. I'll yeah. Meta. And, and as we've glimpsed elsewhere, briefly in flashes and snippets. So him and water, as discussed last week, it's got some sort of symbolic thing. value. Yeah. Um, which, you know, surely has to do with that slave ship. And we'll probably finally and his get mom there. trying to fucking drown his ass when he's a baby. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and I think we're going to get some answers about that ship finally next week, but I'll save that for the end. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, meanwhile, Strange is uh, out golfing. Yeah. He's on the, the links, on the links um, with his caddy. Mm-hmm. And he sees Chichester coming up to him. And because Chichester is black, he's like, hey, caddy, uh, where's your. Your master, you seem yeah. to have wandered away from him. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not a caddy. Yeah, I'm like, I don't have a master. Yeah, I'm a free man. Uh, and he's like, okay, well, can you go away? I'm trying to focus on my swing here. And he's like, nah, I just want to yeah, take your swing. I want to talk to you about Do something. Thing. Yeah. And he's like, bah. He gets so frustrated, he like throws down his club. 
And then Chichester drops the fucking hammer down mm-hmm. on Strange's balls by being like, I have a witness that says that you ordered peeps to load up that ship with slaves and sell them in Antigua. And he's like, oh, Delaney? That guy's fucking insane. They just arrested him for yeah. treason. Yeah. Yeah. Nice How far guy. is that going to take you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not scared. I'm Stephen Green. But he's like, um... I don't think so. It's not. It's not Delaney. Mm-mm. I got somebody else. Somebody on the inside. Yeah. Um, and he looks shook. Mm-hmm. He is. He's. Uh, he's even whiter than usual. <laughs> he never gets ahead for like more than twenty minutes of screen time on this. Uh, show. Two <laughs> steps forward, one step back, or whatever. Or one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. I think the latter is what I meant. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, there's no uh, no respite for Stephen Strange, and it's like weird that he ever gets cocky because it's like, do you ever think things are gonna work out for you? Yeah, uh, Stuart Strange. Yeah, I'm sorry. Stephen is the things doctor. did work out well for him eventually. Yeah, I mean, it sucks that he hurt his hands so bad, but <laughs> I mean, he was like maimed. He yeah, he can't say he hurt his hands. <laughs> it feels like an understatement if your hands don't work anymore and you can't perform your job. Is it a maiming if like a Inanimate object does it to you? I think is, is it, well, all right, we'll it go back to the, the, de- the definition of name is going to come into our Main remedy things. Dickwad. <laughs> okay. We got a good list, Bruin. Good. Uh, okay, this is one of my favorite parts of the episode. <laughs> yeah, please. This, re- this recurring uh, thing where the, the prison region yeah. is being visited by Coop as the torture fails to work for Delaney. And the Prince Regent is, like, spitting this giant globe like an impetuous child. Just being, and they're like, no, sorry, water torture didn't work. And he's just like, god damn it. Yeah. So then Coop goes back in, and they brought in a, I think, Chinese doctor or... Dr. Ling. They're like... Dr. Ling, yeah. His potions will cause delusions of the mind. Yeah, so now at this point, Hardy's in, like... Man with the fucking iron mask territory. This getting this shit is looks gnar. so sucky. He's in like an iron coffin full yeah. of water, in like a creepy metal mask with like a like a tube for a mouth. If Doctor Doom looked like that, I would shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, and the the tube mouth is like the right size for a funnel, so they can just pour shit down his gullet that he has to swallow. Yeah, exactly. And then they dip him beneath the water, so it's just a little tippy tube, like his little snorkel. Yeah, the proto snorkel. Yeah. As um, the kids are calling it now. Mm-hmm. The yeah. Taboo Street team. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where we get, like, ultra crazy trippy shit, which this, connects to the yeah. stuff we were talking about earlier with our former water scene, but things go full-blown cuckoo bananas here. It's nuts, and there's a lot to unpack. Um, it's him in the in that full-body makeup again. It's him in a desert. It's a guy in chains. It's his sister climaxing. It's, like... Two skulls in a sea his of maggots. Dead stepbrother, or his dead uh, uh, brother-in-law. He briefly has a oh, flash really? there too. Yeah, uh, an American flag. It's yeah, all very psychedelic. Hardy covered in paint with a fucking spear, looking like yeah. Tarzan and shit. Yeah, it's, it's just a lot. It's cool. It's very cool, but amounting to fuck all at this point until we have more context. Sure, not a shit on it. It looks amazing. I and would say the it's most- tantalizingly vague. Most visually striking thing we've seen on the show all season. I would agree. Okay. Um, torture. Still ain't cutting it. Yeah, it's like torture doesn't work or something. <laughs> it's like he's Who's not going to break. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, 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 what? Oh, yeah. So, uh, I believe the next, yeah, the next thing is um, Godfrey, who has uh, met up with the... Um, uh, God, is it Atticus's brother-in-law? The dude who's like a flesh eater? Yes. A Maori, I believe yeah. he's like a Maori tribesman with facial tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Or I can't remember if, if it's that specific or if it's just like he's one of my scallywags. But I feel like there was some sort of connection. I'm I think right. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's he meets up with Godfrey, who's disguised himself as a woman in like a shawl and a wig. And, and they make off together. Um, We're meant to assume that's how he's most comfortable, though, right? I guess. That's my assumption. I, I mean, in this case, a big deal. A, I was just sort of curious yeah. on an identity level, because that's how sure. I've been reading the character. It's like a dude who, like, 
fits into the norms of society as a matter of course, but like prefers to live his life that way, not for profit, but more for pleasure and identity purposes. I was in, just in this context, it's a disguise, though. In this context, yes. And also a very ingenious one, I have to say. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very clever. Um, and uh, British Ops Winters goes to be to tell um, Strange that's like, hey, it was Godfrey. He had a bunch of, like, half his clothes were, like, ladies' garments. Yeah, he had a secret life. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and Strange is like, well, find him, damn it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, since the torture ain't taken, Coop has another indignified visit to the <laughs> Prince region where he's like, hey, sorry, that, uh, Chinese doctor, no, nah, didn't work out. Yeah. So he's like, give him what he wants. Yeah, exactly. Which is, uh, strange. Mm-hmm. Delaney just wants some strange. Yeah. And this is, uh, our episode capper. It's quite the scene. I was very pleased with this episode, Capper. It's it's tantalizing. Yeah. Um, ah, listeners, I just killed a moth. Ah, uh, you the man. I, I think I did, that. anyway. The real James Delaney. <laughs> Killing without impunity. <laughs> what will uh, his wild card do next? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was it your plan to get caught? He really did bane it up this episode. Yeah, this is like my favorite uh, Hardy performance in a hot minute here. Mm-hmm. It's just it's such a more pleasant episode. Anyways, let's finish with how do we, how do we got, Jason? Well, um, Strange sort of like swaggers in. He's like, hey, you look like shit. I uh, heard you wanted to talk to me. What's going on? Yeah. And uh, Delaney, I believe his line, and he's used it before, is like, I have need for you. I have a I have purpose for you. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Which he's, he's uttered multiple times in the show, but this episode specifically, it's always very like, oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the fact that he had like, what does he need Strange for? Yeah, when Strange has seemingly like fucked him yeah. pretty hard in the past. Like before this whole encounter, like they have some sort of history. They have shared history. Um, which hopefully we see come to light in the next episode, which it, I think organically carries us over to, do you have some predictions? Yes, many. Hit me, baby. Well, a, a couple. Okay. Well, all right, that's fine. Um, as many times as you want, you know? <laughs> okay, I'm winding up. Um, <laughs> here's my first one, uh, is that we're going to learn almost right away what's going on with that boat, after all. That would be nice. Whose account of events is correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Delaney's role in the sinking of the ship and the or the murder of the slaves was? Yeah, etc. I'd love to have that put to bed, etc. I yeah, think yeah, we yeah. inevitably, hopefully, learn more about his time in Africa, mm. and I think we definitely are going to get resolution on the whole Zilpha thing because she was kind of a non-factor in this episode. She's acting like a weird zombie. Well, she was a little less zombie-like. Still a little zombie. Like, I don't know. I don't get what that character's deal is, so I just have Off. zero trust for her up to this point, you know? Well, I fully believe our theory that she's possessed. That's my... That's why I say I don't trust her, but I still don't know that I get the rules of reality in this show enough to, like, say that she is or is not, you know, fucking been taken over. But right. I, it, it's the thing that makes the most sense to me at this point. Um, I just think, you know, since it, next week is the final episode, um, we're going to get answers to the unresolved questions. Those being, yes. what went on with Slave that ship? ship? What happened in Africa? What's up with Mommy? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I think we know what's up with Mommy. That she's, but, that she was crazy town? Yeah. But I'm just still confused why she keeps coming back. Why, like, why is this still a thing if we don't have any concrete conclusion about what her deal was, what she was doing in the water, besides trying to murder James back in the day, you know? Yeah. That's on, that's my biggest confusion. Like, why has, has the whole mom aspect of the show been seeded so heavily for seven episodes, and I still don't quite get what the big fucking deal is, unless it is that uh, Una's character has been taken over. Yeah. But we'll see. But we'll get a resolution to that, I'm sure. Yeah. 
Is Strange about to go on the ship with them? That seems insane. Is he about to just get torched or, like, dragged because of Delaney? <laughs> That's I, what I'm curious about. I have no idea. I mean, yeah, what? I mean, because this, to me, played like I had hoped it would, which I think I went into a little bit last week, where it's, like, usually with these prestige shows, like, the last two episodes are, like, really intense. It's, like, dominoes start falling. There's all kinds of crazy twists. Right. And there's, like, every episode is, like, definitely a cliffhanger. Yeah, I mean, which I think speaks to uh, how underwhelming the last couple episodes have been. Um, because there was a lot of just, like, dragging of feet. And also, tonally, it was just sort of, like, not enjoyable to watch, you know? Like, not... And in a way, I didn't feel it was, like, purposefully not enjoyable. It was just, like, I'm not, like, getting a lot out of doing this. Yeah. Um... So it, it was a it was a heartening episode for me just because I was like a little more enjoying Delaney's journey, he was even engaging. though he was being tortured for a long time and shit. Like it, it was engaging. Yeah, that's the perfect it was point engaging. It. it moved. Um, you found out crazy shit like Brace murdered his dad. There were a lot of like nice revelations, and, like plot machinations that made me excited to see how they like stick the landing or don't next week, and I certainly hope they do. Do we have any further predictions beyond, like, hey, we're going to get the answers we see? You kind of covered all the ones I wanted to bring up. I think, yeah, we talked about wanting to get, uh, know exactly what's up with the sister, right? That's, like, a big one. And the boat. Where is he going to get a fucking boat? Where's he going to get a boat? Not is... what happened with the boat. Where is he going to get the next boat? Yeah. That's another one where I'm real curious, because that. Well, he is meeting up with uh, Strange. And that, that dude man has boats. Boats. <laughs> Yeah, if nothing else, that man has boats. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I guess, I mean, we still don't know for sure who killed um That felt Winter. real sketch to me, where it's like, like a little boy was like, it wasn't him. It was a company. And it's like, it's like, like how the well, fuck who? do you know? Yeah. I mean, granted, if, like, Delaney was, like, passed out in his own filth or whatever, then it's like you concretely are going to know it wasn't him, but... That felt a little like weird and hand wavy to me, where I'm like, with that, like, I know. how do you how do you end an episode with like a fucked up thing where it's like maybe your protagonist just like ripped the heart out of a child, come back next week, <laughs> and then like the next week it's just like kind of like don't worry about it, it probably wasn't him. Yeah, I that mean, to me is like very narratively unsatisfying. And yeah, just a little like you can't murder someone that I'm going to be like with that like horrified by, and then just have it be like off screen explained away. Well, yeah, so I think we might get a little bit more on that. I would assume as much. We'll find out whatever, like, Mr. Silvertooth type did her, actually, actually you know? Presumably, yeah. yeah. There's no way we won't have full clarity about that point, I'm assuming, by the end of this series and or season, depending on what it may be. Let's put that one under the hopes column. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful. Anything else? I think we covered this one pretty good. Yeah, I'm it's, actually it's ex- cool. excited to the yeah. finale. What a, what a lovely feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on that note, uh, we will see you next week. It's going to be beautiful. Taboo we'll to bye bye. Taboo in one week, baby. All right. Bye.